everybody. This is our second annual lab coat induction and award ceremony. Uh, my name is Dr. Chris Powers. I am the director of the program in biokinesiology and associate chair. The purpose of today's event is to welcome our new MS and PhD students to the scientific community. One of the distinguishing attributes of our division is the high emphasis we place on the integration of research into practice to advance human health and well-being um, for society. Indeed, one of the reasons our DPT program is continually ranked among the best in the nation is the fact that we have an exceptional research program. Students in our biokinesiology program comprise the engine that drives our research enterprise. Students in the biokinesiology program are dedicated individuals who are committed to advancing the study of human movement. Our masters and PhD students work in various laboratories within the division conducting important research that provides the scientific foundation for the profession of physical therapy. Every fall, the division holds a white coat ceremony for our DPT students. The white coat ceremony was originally designed as a rite of passage for medical students, signifying their entrance into the medical profession. About 15 years ago, our division adopted this ceremony for our DPT students to mark their entrance into the physical therapy profession. During the ceremony, a white coat is placed on each student's shoulders and the oath of the physical therapist is recited. Historically, we have included the BKN students in the DPT white coat ceremony, but the tenor of the ceremony has always been geared more for the clinical program as opposed to our research program. Now, the purpose of the white coat in medicine is to protect the clinician and patient from cross-contamination. But of course, the white lab coat is used for the same purposes in the laboratory setting. In fact, the white lab coat is the quintessential element of the medical and scientific setting. Although most of our labs in our division do not require wearing of a lab coat, the white lab coat is symbolic of scientific rigor across the professions worldwide. We all think of science in one form or another when we see a white lab coat. White lab coats signify professionalism, white lab coats signify competence, and of course a white lab coat signifies status and excellence. For this reason, we have formally adopted the concept of the white coat ceremony for MS and PhD students. Before we get started with the official hooding, or coating, I should say, <laughs> not we're jumping ahead a couple of years here, of our uh, students, um, Dr. Sigward is going to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Kate Havens. I'm very excited to do this, so I'm hoping I don't jump around a lot. I'm extremely pleased to introduce Dr. Keith Havens tonight for tonight's keynote speaker. I've known uh, Dr. Havens for about 14 years. Um, we met in 2007 when she was applying to the PhD program, and I was looking for my very first PhD student. She had a strong engineering background with degrees in biomedical engineering from the University of Michigan um, and USC. And I had a strong clinical background in orthopedic and sports physical therapy. In addition to our complementary personalities, which have continued to complement each other along the way, uh, I knew she was a student for me because she could do math. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't until about a year later when we were playing Yahtzee at a retreat that she informed me as I was making her add up my dice that engineering and arithmetic aren't the same thing. <laughs> so she could do arithmetic too. Um, and that's who I needed on my team for sure. 
Um, she took a chance on me being a junior faculty member, and I didn't even have a real research home at the time. She helped me build my research lab, which wasn't really a matter of where do we put the force plates or the cameras. It was literally organizing and hosting a fundraiser, and not just a bake sale. Um, this was a posh fundraiser in San Marino in an area of town I was uncomfortable in at someone's house. Um, she dealt with tearing tickets and organizing pie, <laughs> uh, gathering things to be auctioned off. And, and I should say she helped me. Um, I should say they helped me because her then boyfriend, Robin, actually made some pieces of art to be um, auctioned off uh, at the event. Once we had our lab in place, well, once we had our money, then we built the lab. Um, and uh, at the at the time, Kate, that's what she was known back then, <laughs> developed an amazing dissertation study assessing dynamic postural control during cutting tasks in soccer athletes. And after her dissertation, uh, we were certainly on the map. She was on the map. Um, she became Dr. Havens at that time. Um, since those years, Dr. Havens has thanked me for introducing her to anatomy uh, along her journey in the PhD program. And my response has always been, it's completely my pleasure. I'm so happy to share the joy of anatomy. And I am so proud uh, that Dr. Havens has become a, such a critical and popular leader in the division's anatomical science program. Uh, we could talk a lot about what, what the joys of anatomy labs, um, the, the hours and hours that we stood in, a la in labs uh, for our side gigs. Um, our 2U filming. We had two days of filming um, pieces of anatomy dissection in the lab with the big film crews and all this makeup and hairspray on. And uh, the first day was so grueling. The next day she came in with um, and got me my first pair of um, support stockings. <laughs> and also brought in little pieces of foam that were her uh, kids' toys um, so that we didn't have to stand on the hard ground the whole time. They were very small, so we had to stand still, but it did help. Um, not only has she done uh, these amazing things uh, since the fundraiser, um, she also got married to her amazing husband, Robin, and has had two wonderful little boys I only see one. Oh, there. There's Onyx. There's Yaro. <laughs> she also made her way to associate professor in this last year, and she has established a research agenda focusing on perinatal health, particularly the biomechanics underlying lumbopelvic pain and pathology in postpartum mothers, a true passion of hers. She has served as a mentor herself to students and faculty alike since those first years when we met. And I am so pleased and proud that she agreed uh, to give this keynote. Welcome. Um, that's not the introduction that I thought I was gonna get, so. That was really sweet. Thank you for that introduction. I am thrilled to be here tonight to welcome the new members of our biokinesiology Trojan family. Congratulations for taking this step in your academic journey. I have a quote here on my office door here on campus. I've had it here for years because it reminds me of the importance of the concept that I will center this talk on, persistence. The quote starts, Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. What is persistence? Well, I teach anatomy, so here's what came to mind. Persistence is keeping your chin up, keeping your eye on the prize, keeping your nose to the grindstone, keeping your ear on the ground, keeping your head above water, keeping one foot moving in front of the other. Okay, maybe a few of those were a stretch, but I think you get my point. It is determination. Persistence is taking one step and then taking another and another and another. It is not giving up when it's hard. It is believing in yourself. So let me tell you the side of my journey that you likely have not heard. 
This isn't the stuff on my CV. It's the painful, hard stuff, the heavy stuff. Dr. Powers told me after I wrote this talk to keep it light. <laughs> I did the exact opposite. I still want to share my experience with you tonight. But first, I want to own and acknowledge my privilege. I identify as a cisgender, able-bodied, middle-class white woman. This has undoubtedly opened doors for me and allowed, to, allowed me to move through this nation with an ease that many cannot. I have been extraordinarily lucky. I have a career that I love, a husband who adores me, and two little boys who light me up. I completed my bachelor's degree in biomedical engineering at the University of Michigan in 2004. For the last year of my undergraduate studies, I worked in a biomechanics laboratory under Dr. Dan Ferris. This is how I fell in love with biomechanics. I worked with PhD students, helping build pneumatically powered exoskeletons, ankle foot orthoses, to help individuals with spinal cord injury walk. This was truly pivotal experience in my career. It introduced me to motion capture, to using engineering in a clinical population, and to the PhD journey. Dr. Ferris urged me to find a PhD program. Ready to let go of snow for a while, I applied to biomedical engineering programs, mostly in sunny states. But I only got into one program, USC. This was not my top choice. And not because it's not a good program, the Viterbi School of Engineering is ranked number 12th in the whole nation. I wasn't so sure about LA. I hadn't established a clear mentorship with an advisor, and I was moving so far from my support system. But I decided to move across the country and give myself the shot. So that's how I became a Trojan, a PhD program in biomedical engineering. But if you were listening carefully to my introduction, you may have heard I didn't get my PhD from that department. I got it from ours. As with many programs, all PhD students had to take an intensive written screening exam after their first year to demonstrate mastery of the core courses. Despite a 3.6 GPA and high grades in those courses, I failed that exam. I was offered a second opportunity the following year to present my research. I was studying muscle architecture of the tricep surrey calf muscles in children with cerebral palsy. The faculty committee failed me again. And I was told that my PhD journey was over. How do you pick yourself back up? How do you let go of something you worked so hard to accomplish when it shatters before you? Everyone listening, I invite you to please sit up straight with your feet flat on the floor, your shoulders back and down. Close your eyes for a moment and take a deep breath. Now think of a time in your own life that was difficult, that you were challenged and felt the pain of that challenge. And consider for a moment what it took you to rise above that. Take another deep breath and blink your eyes open. This is persistence. This is determination. This is resilience. And that's what I had to find in myself. And that is what you, new and continuing biokinesiology masters and PhD students, will find in yourselves over the course of your academic career and beyond. Your data collection computer will fail while your participant is waiting with a full body marker set on. Your advisor will rewrite your conference abstract after you thought it was perfect. <laughs> your paper will get rejected. Your grant will not get funded. You'll go up for your dream job and not get it. You must find it in yourself to get up again the next day and to keep working on it. 
Clearly, the faculty who failed me in engineering were wrong. My PhD journey was not over. In 2008, I reached out to Dr. Cornelia Kulig, whose biomechanics class I had loved when I was in engineering school, and she encouraged me to apply. I am beyond grateful for her and her continued encouragement and support all these years. I was accepted, and I once again started a PhD program. My advisor, Dr. Susan Sigward, took a risk with me. We like to joke that since I was our first PhD student, our lab meetings were really small. It was just the two of us. <laughs> and Dr. Sigward introduced me to one of the biggest loves of my life, not my husband, I had already met him at that time, but anatomy. I love anatomy, and I am so grateful. And I am so grateful to have the opportunity to teach and learn it here. I have taught anatomy to over 2,000 students in five different USC programs. I've designed and created hours of online content and recently established a social media anatomy presence. I have a growing following on Instagram at Kate Haven's PhD. <laughs> oh, you can follow me too. I have co-authored numerous manuscripts, established a line of research in postpartum biomechanics, and developed an interdisciplinary research group. I have persisted. Now let me finish by reading the entire persistence quote. This is from Calvin Coolidge, our 30th US president. Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. Thank you. Sorry, I'm going to break our token of appreciation. <laughs> break it on the podium. It says Catherine Havens. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, my name is Susan Sigurd. I'm the director of the uh, master's program in biokinesiology, and we are going to start with our coding ceremony. Um, the MS in bio biokinesiology program prepares students to be research scientists in the field of biokinesiology. Graduates are conversant in all areas of biokinesiology and are able to conceptualize research questions across several levels of analysis. The sports emphasis in the master's program prepares graduates to advance the use of data and technology to evaluate performance, injury, and injury risk across a variety of settings. Graduates are able to apply theoretical principles of motor control, physiology, and biomechanics in human performance assessment and interpretation. At this time, I'm going to have Dr. Powers come up and... Uh, Yell out your names <laughs> as I quote you. <laughs> okay. Stephanie Guzman, Cal Poly Pomona. Janet Salazar, Cal State Long Beach. <laughs> Jackie Wang, Michigan State University. <laughs> Yuxing Zhao, Dailing University of Technology.
Sophia Chambers, University of Oregon. Jerry Lin, National Taiwan University of Science and Technology. <laughs> Noah Ogata, Vanderbilt University. Travis Craven, Whitman College. <laughs> Nicholas Vu, University of California, Irvine. <laughs> Armand Gray, Chapman University. Jolene Sauer, the Ohio State University. <laughs> Bailey McGalen, University of Colorado Boulder. And Kiamni Yoakum, uh, Morehouse College, I'm sorry. <laughs> Great, thank you. We have eight incoming students in our Doctor of Philosophy program. The PhD is the most rigorous of all academic degrees and is the highest academic degree offered by the university. The program prepares graduates to be academic faculty members and independent research scientists in the field of biokinesiology. Graduates establish and direct collaborative interdisciplinary research programs. Um, they will be trained to be leaders, scholars, teachers, and innovators in biokinesiology. We will now present the PhD students who will be coded by their advisors. Will the PhD students and advisors please stand up and line up to the right side of the stage and advisors to the left side of the stage. Okay, this is this. Antonio Scalante, University of Southern California. Advisor Todd Schroeder. <laughs> Nora Amodi, Concordia University. Barbara Sargent, Advisor. Aria Sagankar, Manipal College of Health Professions, Mahi, India. And 
being advised by Dr. Stacy Dusing. Maxfield Monk, University of Southern California. <laughs> Advisors, Dr. Beth Fisher and Dr. Chris Powers. Both. <laughs> Thank you. Matthew Heindel, Seattle Pacific University of New England. Dr. Lori Mishner, advisor. I like the Academy Awards, you know. <laughs> Angelo Barch, Universidad Catholica Valparaiso, Chile. <laughs> Dr. Francisco Valero Cuevas, advisor. And the sharpest man in the house. Stanley Smith, Louisiana State University. Advisor, Dr. Susan Sigward. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, this evening, we also have a DPT student from the class of 2024 who was unable to attend the DPT white coat ceremony. Our division chair, Dr. Jim Gordon, will do the honors of coding her. Helen Gavorgian, Cal State University, Northridge. I would now like to invite Dr. Carolee Winstein to the podium to present the Jacqueline Perry Scholarship Award. So it is my honor to present the recipient of the Jacqueline Perry Scholarship Award. The Jacqueline Perry Scholarship was named in honor of Dr. Jacqueline Perry, a pioneer in the area of orthopedic surgery and rehabilitation and an emeritus faculty member in our division. In fact, you can see a portrait of her as you walk down the hallway. It honors and acknowledges a student in the Doctor of Philosophy program who has achieved candidacy and performed with high distinction in, scholar, in scholastic, clinical, and investigative work. This year's Jacqueline Perry Scholarship Award is awarded to Jordan Cannon. Okay, so that concludes our ceremony for this evening. Um, we would um, uh, please join us. We have a reception afterwards at the Rainbow Cafe. Um, I believe there will be signs and people to point you in the right direction. So um, I invite all of you to attend and enjoy a, a bite to eat and something to drink. And um, that concludes our ceremony. And I really appreciate everyone coming this evening. And uh, welcome again to our new BCAN students, our masters and PhD students. Congratulations. <laughs>